Hello, Julia here. It's lovely to be with you on your screens today. Um, so today I wanted to talk to you about something that is very close to my heart and that something is cake. I am a big fan of cake. Um, jam sponge, uh, lemon cake, gingerbread, coffee cake, toffee cake, Battenberg. I love all of them. I'm a big fan of cake. Now there was this one time me and my friend went to a coffee shop and it was a little independent coffee shop and as we went in we saw that on the counter they had a selection of homemade cakes that you could buy. Now this was very exciting and my eyes were immediately drawn to this plate of chocolate brownies. Now these chocolate brownies looked amazing. They looked moist, they looked sticky but not too sticky. They basically looked like little squares of chocolate flavoured heaven and I was very excited to be in their presence. Now my friend turned to me and she said they look nice don't they Julia and I said yes and then she said shall I get us some and I said oh yes please and so I was very excited as she went up to the counter and yet as she started to order my excitement turned to horror because what she said was hello please can I have two coffees all well and good and please can I have two slices of carrot and walnut cake what it turns out that while I was looking at the plate of chocolate brownie like a reasonable person she was looking at the plate next to it with a carrot and walnut cake on it now this is my opinion not everyone will agree but I think that carrot is the worst, most irresponsible and disgusting thing that you could dream of adding to a cake. Why would you ruin a cake in such a way? It is a disgrace, a terrible plan. And the only thing that could possibly make a carrot cake worse is to put a wrinkly walnut on top of it. Why? Anyway, I was not very pleased and she brought over this slice of carrot and walnut cake. But the thing was, I wasn't just going to be disgusted with it because she'd kindly bought it for me as like a nice thing. So I thought, well, better try it. And so I tore myself away from the plates of beautiful chocolate brownies and went and found a table for us to eat our carrot and walnut cake. I got my spoon and I took the tiniest little mouthful of this carrot and walnut cake and inched it towards my mouth. It was actually really nice, really, really good. One of my best cakes that I've had actually. It was delicious. <laughs> Who knew? And what's more, on my way out of the shop, um, they'd got um, one of the brownies and they cut it into little pieces and put a free sample sign behind it so you were allowed to try a little bit if you wanted. And I did wasn't as nice as the carrot and walnut cake. There you go. But at the time, I thought it was the end of the world. It was an absolute disappointment that I hadn't got to have the um, chocolate brownies, but it did end up working out. It was okay. Um, I think life can be like that sometimes in that sometimes there are things that disappoint us. There's little things that don't go to plan, but it feels like they've gone wrong. Now I try and remember um, a phrase I have heard from a film. One of my favourite actors says it, Julie Andrews, and the line she says is, God never closes a door without opening a window. Now I love that line. What it means is that um, if a door closes um, and something's gone wrong, it's not the way you planned, that door is closed, God will open a window. So he'll get you in. He'll get you in anyway. He won't leave you outside in the cold. Now some um, disappointments in life can just be daft things like whether or not I get a piece of chocolate brownie but sometimes it can be bigger things as well, things that might worry you a bit um, but the message is the same, you don't have to give up. The Bible tells us that God will never leave us. The Bible tells us that there are actually quite a few ways that God makes sure that we don't have to be on our own. For example, there is the story of two women called Ruth and Naomi. Naomi had two sons and each of these sons was married and had a wife. 
and one of these women was called Ruth. So that's how Ruth and Naomi knew each other. Now sadly, both of Naomi's sons and also her husband all died and so Naomi was left all on her own. And at this point Naomi turned to the two wives and she said, don't hang around with me and my misery. You need to go back home to your hometown, move back in with your family and be away from me and my sadness. I have nothing more to offer you. And at that point, um, one of the son's wife does go home. But Ruth decided to do something else. Ruth decided that she did not want to give up on Naomi. And so she made her a promise. She said, I'm not leaving you. I promise wherever you go, I will go with you and I'll make sure that I look after you. We can look after each other. And you know what? Ruth kept her promise. So Ruth and Naomi ended up moving back to Naomi's hometown and Ruth went out to go and get them some food. So because of Ruth and Naomi's status in the town, Ruth wasn't allowed to work. She wasn't allowed to get a job. But what she was allowed to do was she was allowed to go to a field where they would be working, where they'd be picking wheat um, that they would sell to make bread. Um, and Ruth was allowed to follow them round. And if they dropped any of the wheat, she was allowed to pick it up and gather that. And then she could take away what they'd dropped and she was allowed to take that and they could eat that as bread. So that's what Ruth did. Now, as she was going around picking up the grain that people had dropped, um, there was the kindly field owner who noticed what was happening. Now, this kindly field owner was a man called Boaz. And Boaz asked his workers about what was going on. And they told Boaz who Ruth was. They told Boaz about the promise that Ruth had made to Naomi and that Ruth had decided to live with Naomi even though Ruth's husband had died and to make sure that she could look after Naomi. And Boaz was really touched by this story and the kindness that Ruth had showed. And so he went up and spoke to Ruth and he said, I'm really impressed with all that I've heard about you. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I could look after you as best I can. So make sure you come to this field. I'll make sure that you get enough food, that no one bothers you and I'll protect you. Make sure you are looked after. Now, Ruth was really pleased with this. And so at the end of the day, she went home to Naomi and she told her all about Boaz. Now, Naomi remembered Boaz from when Naomi lived here before because in fact they were related. Now in those days, if a man's relative had died, it was quite usual for that man to then go on to marry the dead relative's wife so that he could make sure that they were looked after. And so Naomi had a suggestion. She said, Ruth, what you should do is you should marry this Boaz and then we can all make sure that we are looked after and we can look after each other. And Ruth, well, Boaz is nice enough, she says yes. And so she decides to ask him to marry her. Now, in those days, they had this really odd tradition. If a woman wanted to ask someone to marry them, they had to do it in this really specific, weird way. What they had to do is they had to wait for the person to be asleep. And then they had to go in, move the blanket off of their feet, and then just lie down. And then when the person woke up, they would see that the blanket was off their feet and that there was a woman lying there and they would know that the woman wanted to marry them. Isn't that weird? I think that would be hilarious to do today. If you wanted to get someone to marry you, so what you'd have to do is just wait for them to be asleep and then sneak into their bedroom, pull the duvet up onto their legs and then grab their feet and say, do you want to get married? I'll be your wife. It would be brilliant. Very romantic. Anyway, that is what Ruth does. And she must have done it in a much more beautiful and romantic way than I am imagining in my head because Ruth does not wake up and go, ah! he wakes up and he smiles. And he is really pleased that Ruth has asked him to marry her. And so they decide that they will get married. And Boaz is really pleased to be able to look after Ruth and Naomi. And all three of them, I imagine, looked after each other. Um, a couple of years later, Ruth and, Boaz have, Ruth and Boaz have a beautiful baby boy called Obed. And Obed happened to be the great, 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 great grandfather of Jesus. 
interest in how these things work out. But as they hand that little baby to Naomi, if you think about everything that Naomi's been through, everything that she's lost, and then suddenly she is handed this beautiful little baby. The story started off with Naomi's misery and her being lost. And it ends with this beautiful baby and this new hope for her and Boaz and Ruth. God never closes a door without opening a window. Now, I think sometimes in that story, we might be a bit like Ruth. We might have a friend who we don't want to give up on, who we want to make sure that we're there for. And that is brilliant if you can look after someone like that. Um, other times, I think we might be more like Naomi and we need someone not to give up on us. So we can remember that the Bible says that we never have to be on our own, that God will never leave us. And maybe there will be someone like Ruth who we can turn to as well to give us a hand when we need it. God never closes a door without opening a window. OK, so I am going to finish off with a prayer. If you like what I've said and you agree with it, you can say Amen at the end if you want to. So, dear God, thank you that you tell us that we never have to be on our own. And please help us to remember that as we are struggling with things. And also please help us to notice if other people are struggling so that we can help them as well. Amen. Right, thank you for listening. I will see you next time.